Hi guys, um, this is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. And today I thought I'd do a little video on the subject of SVTs, um, otherwise known as supraventricular tachycardias. And the reason for doing this video is because one of the guys who saw me on um, YouTube contacted me. His name is Tyrone. So Tyrone, this is for you. He wanted to know what um, SVTs are all about and um, what to do about them. So Tyrone, this is for you. I hope that you find this useful. Uh, and I'm sorry it's taken so long to try and get down to doing a video on this subject. Okay, so uh, what is an SVT? Okay, an SVT is an abnormal heart rhythm. Um, uh, which is caused by a problem with the electrical circuitry of the heart. To try and explain this a little bit better to you, you have to understand how the heart works. Okay, The heart has its own electricity, i.e. there is a part of the heart which generates electricity, and the electricity goes down some complex wiring and activates the heart muscle to contract. The... Um, place where that electricity is normally generated is called the sinoatrial node, um, and that is essentially the pacemaker. And we all are born with a pacemaker where that electricity is produced, and then that electricity goes down from the pacemaker to the ventricles and um, causes the ventricles to contract, and that determines your heart rate. Now, uh, to try and understand it a little bit better, Imagine that there's a little man in that pacemaker, and um, what he's basically doing is he is saying uh, he is uh, beating a drum. Okay, so he takes uh, he uh, he beats the drum. The sound of that drum goes down some complex wiring and causes the heart to contract. And he waits for the echo to die down. And when the echo dies down, he beats the drum again. Uh, so. <clears throat> that, is the, that is what the function of the sinoatrial node is, or the pacemaker. Now, any heart rhythm disturbance which happens uh, uh, in, around, outside the pacemaker, okay, outside the pacemaker can be classified as a dysrhythmia. SVT means supraventricular tachycardia. So what we mean by that is that tachycardia means a fast heart rate. Supraventricular means that the fast heart rate is coming from above the ventricles, okay, but not from the normal pacemaker. So what tends to happen is, generally what tends to happen is that uh, the, the pacemaker fires, um, the impulse goes down uh, to a part called the AV node, which is a little node between the atria, the top two chambers, and the bottom two chambers. And from there, it splits, and it goes to the ventricles and causes a contraction. In some people, you can get an additional bit of circuitry or a, additional wiring, which means that what can happen is that the impulse goes from the atrium down into the atrioventricular node, and then there are two pathways it can go down. And what tends to happen is it'll go down one pathway, but then go back up the other pathway and therefore cause a sort of cycle effect, um, which then results in very rapid um, uh, contraction of the heart. And that is what the fundamental problem is with an SVT. It means that there is some kind of accessory pathway through which um, allows the impulses to go down one pathway and come up the other pathway. So instead of the impulse going all the way down to the heart, it just keeps going in a very circular motion and causes a very fast heartbeat, okay? Um, and this, can, this usually, um, the patient will usually complain of sudden onset, like a light switch, of fast, regular palpitations. So the palpitations are generally very fast, their offset is very sudden, and then when they go off, they go off again like a light switch, with very, very quick uh, offset. Um, it can occur in anyone, it's commonly seen in young people, and a lot of young people say, yes, I did get palpitations, and they come to me and they'll say, well, but I know how to handle them. And the way you can handle them is by activating your vagus nerve, which has a generally a slowing effect on the heart. And by slowing the heart down, you allow the impulses to go down the right way. So how can you activate the vagus? Well, the vagus, you can press on the neck over here for a little while and massage the carotid artery here, the carotid body, and that will slow the heart down. 
Um, other things that you can do is do a straining maneuver, so something called a Valsalva maneuver. So when you're, for example, on the toilet and you're trying to strain down, that can uh, activate the vagus, slow the heart down, and get rid of the SVT. A few other things that people can do is just uh, rub on their eyeballs, put their head in cold water. Sometimes, if you have a syringe and you blow um, the, the narrow end of the syringe, so you're pushing the plunger outwards, just doing that will get rid of the SVT. And these are maneuvers that some people just do because they've worked out without knowing the science behind it that these maneuvers get rid of the SVT. Um, so, um, um, and, and in those people, if the SVTs are infrequent, you know, if they're getting one episode once a year, um, and they say, well, I know how to get rid of it. And whenever I, I get it, I just, you know, press on my neck or I blow my nose or something like that and goes away. Nothing else needs to be done. Um, a lot of people worry about, are SVTs dangerous? And I suppose they can be, okay? Uh, it's It would be incorrect to say they're, they can, they're not dangerous. They can be dangerous, but most of the times they're not dangerous. I'll tell you who they are dangerous, when they are dangerous. They're dangerous if you have a pre-existing problem with your heart. So if you have a, uh, a weak heart, if you have heart failure, if you've got a problem with your valves from before, then they could be dangerous. Um, the second time they could be dangerous is if the heart is going very, very, very fast. Generally, the heart rate when you are in an SVT uh, is between 150 to 250 beats per minute. But if you're going very fast, say, you know, closer to 250, 240, 250, you don't want to um, let that SVT go on for a prolonged period of time because, you know, the heart will not cope, um, even if it's a strong heart the heart will not cope for several hours in that heart rhythm because when you are going very fast, several things happen. When you're going very fast at that rate, the heart is not able to take in as much blood as it should because it's beating so fast that it can't relax, fill with blood and push all that blood out. So it only um, fills with a little bit of blood and pushes a little bit of blood out, okay? And so what that means is a lot less blood goes around the body and you will feel tired, you can feel dizzy, and the heart starts lacking blood with time uh, because the heart itself is a muscle and it needs a blood supply. And if there's less blood coming around, then um, obviously the heart will struggle. And if you leave it for, say, a day or something like that at a rate of 100, you know, 250 beats per minute, then that can really be very, very dangerous. So I suppose there are two things which determine whether they're dangerous. One, whether you have a pre-existing heart problem, and two, what the rate is and how long they go on for. Um, so um, uh, those are the times. But otherwise, they're generally not dangerous, okay? and the big problem with SVTs are that they're inconvenient. They can come on at any time when they happen, they can make you feel unwell, and then uh, you have to wait for them to go away or you have to come to hospital to get, you know, get rid of them. Uh, so they are inconvenient. And a lot of treatment for SVTs is dependent on how much inconvenience they cause. So if you're getting them every day, it's best to try and get some kind of uh, thing done to try and get rid of them altogether. If, on the other hand, they're happening once every two years and they don't last very long and you can get rid of them, then you don't need any treatment whatsoever. Uh, it's always good, though, that if you get palpitations and if you have um, uh, um, symptoms suggestive of an SVT, that you get checked out. There is one condition in which uh, the heart rates can go very, very fast, and that's called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Okay, And this consists of an accessory pathway from the atria to the ventricles again. And you can see the evidence of Wolf Parkinson White on a resting ECG. So I think the minimum you need to get done if you're suffering from SVTs is a resting ECG because that will show you if you have Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. And if you do, then it's very um, reasonable to get that sorted out as soon as possible because when you are in an SVT with Wolf Parkinson White, it can go very, very fast and that can be dangerous. Um, so the next question is what brings on these SVTs? Well, they can occur for no rhyme or reason, but anything that inflames the body can bring them on. So um, particularly if you smoke, that's a hugely inflammatory hit 
that the body has to take every time you smoke, that can bring it on. Alcohol can definitely bring them on. Um, excessive caffeine, um, um, carbonated drinks, energy drinks, that can bring them on. If you're very tired and lack of sleep can bring them on. Infections um, can bring them on. Um, so they can occur for no reason, but they can also be very definite precipitants. And it's always good to try and cut those out if you feel that they bring your SVTs on. So the first thing you should try and do is always modify your lifestyle, cut those things out that can bring them on, uh, because that's, that may be all that's needed. Um, the next question then is, okay, so let's say you have an SVT. What do you do about it when you're having the SVT? Uh, I would say the first thing is not to panic, okay? Generally, they are uh, not hugely dangerous. If you have an SVT at home, you'll recognize it because your heart will be beating very fast and beating quite regularly, and you'll come on just like a light switch. Um, so what you should do in that time is stop doing what you're doing, measure your pulse, and try and work out how fast your heart rate is over a, you know, a minute work out its regularity and its speed. And then I would recommend you lie down. And what you can then do is just try and either put your head, you have some rest or stop doing what you're doing. What you can then do is just blow your nose like that, and just really push against a, blow, a blocked nose. And then that may have the effect of slowing it down. You could press on your neck just like that for a little while, okay? Or you could uh, put your head, rub your eyeballs or put your head in some cold water, and that might get rid of it. If that isn't getting rid of it, and the SVT is going on for, you know, half an hour or something, and you're feeling unwell with it, you're feeling just generally yucky, then the best thing is to come to a hospital. And most people worry about coming to A&E because they think, oh, I've got to wait for so long. But actually, if you just go and say, look, I think I'm having an SVT, please do an ECG straight away so that it can be defined. Uh, then most a &E departments will just fast track you, take you and do the ECG and confirm whether you are in an SVT or not. Uh, and then what will happen is that the doctor will come and he will try some vagal maneuvers. He'll press on your neck, he'll, um, he'll get you to blow in a syringe and see if that aborts the SVT. If that doesn't abort the SVT, then the next step would be to try and give you something called adenosine, which is a drug which again tries to slow the heart down. And it basically causes a block between the atria and the ventricles. And it is very, very short-lived. Um, but it can make you feel just generally yucky and give you a little bit of a tight chest for a few seconds whilst your SVT slows down. And generally, that's very effective in getting rid of the SVT. If even that doesn't work, then you can go on drugs such as beta blockers or calcium antagonists. Uh, and that will generally do the job. Sometimes they can give you something called amiodarone, and that can also have uh, the effect of aborting the SVT. Um, it's always good, once you've had that SVT taken out, to try and ask yourself, what are the precipitants? It's also good to know whether there's any evidence of, the, of Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Um, uh, because if you, have, if you can identify the precipitants, you simply go about avoiding them. If you find uh, that you have evidence of Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, then there is no doubt in my mind that that should be treated. Uh, and the treatment, uh, and SVTs are one of those conditions, very few conditions that have a cure, okay? There are very few conditions in cardiology which you can cure. You can mask the symptoms, you can uh, prevent it from getting worse, but with an SVT, you can cure it. Uh, and the cure, cure is an ablation. Okay, and that's basically burning of this accessory pathway with a bit of laser. It may seem daunting initially, but I've sent a lot of people for SVT ablation, and they come back and they're cured, and they say, I can't believe it. You know, I had it. Okay, I was a little bit daunted by the procedure. It's a keyhole procedure. It can last a couple of hours, but you're awake throughout it. It's not huge. It's not uncomfortable or painful or anything like that. Uh, but it cures your problem, and therefore you don't have to take any tablets, um, uh, you know, and you are then free of the SVTs. So it's always a good idea, and the cure rates are around about 90% or even higher in good centers. So I think if you have an SVT, it's always worth thinking in your mind, is this inconveniencing my quality of life? 
because it's so frequent and it's inconvenient. And if that is the case, then I think you should talk to your GP or your consultant cardiologist and say, can you offer me curative ablation because I want to get rid of them and I don't want to take tablets. And that's completely um, uh, reasonable and uh, in my mind, the right thing to do. If I were ever having an SVT, um, I, I would want it ablated, having seen how well uh, patients do after they've had it ablated. Um, and that's about it, I think. I don't think I have anything else to say about SVTs. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, uh, this is my website, uh, so you can um, send me a message through my website. My secretary has a phone number. You can ring her if you'd like to see me or consult with me. Uh, I'm also on Twitter now and on Facebook. So uh, any questions, uh, please feel free to get in touch. And I wish you well. Thank you so much. Uh, and thanks for watching. Um, and Tyrone, I hope this um, this is um, was good for you. Thank you. Bye.